right, we have Mark Meckler, who's in charge of Convention of States, a great organization. How are you, Mark, and what's going on? I'm doing great, and man, a lot is going on all over the country right now, Mark. Well, tell us of some of your victory, vic- victories recently. Yeah, the last few weeks have been incredible. So in Arkansas, three weeks ago, we passed. That became state number 13. Really exciting, great grassroots effort there, great senator and representative leading the charge. So that was kind of the way we started the season. I I was in Arkansas a few different times, really fun. This week was Utah. So I was in Salt Lake City, and we passed. We had a great senator and Vickers in, in the Senate that got it out of the Senate. We had Representative Merrill leading the charge in the House. So two nights ago, they literally suspended the rules, did a special vote, and it was a big win. It wasn't even close. We won 42 to 32 in the Utah House, and that made it uh, that's state number 14. So where we're headed right now is into West Virginia and Mississippi. Iowa is going. Kansas is going. So there's a lot of stuff going on everywhere right now. Let me ask you a question. Let's, let's uh, circle back to Utah for a minute. Sure. What is... Mitt Romney's position, if any, on Convention of States? You know, I haven't seen him take a solid position, but he apparently got asked about it in, in some meeting in the last few weeks and, and indicated just sort of vague support. I mean, there was nothing super specific. I wouldn't say he endorsed it, but he certainly didn't take any kind of position against it. What about um, Mike Lee? You know, I'm really excited about this, Mark. He was actually there last week when I was there. I didn't get to meet with him. I know you've talked to Mike a lot. He was actually uh, very helpful. And the way he was helpful is there were people, Eagle Forum, who we talked about as an opponent of this. And uh, so they had been using his name, saying that he was against it. He actually said to a lot of the representatives, anybody who says I'm against this, uh, they're using my name incorrectly. That's not true. I haven't taken a position, but I'm definitely not against it. So that was really helpful to us. There are a couple of representatives actually turned their votes on that. Mm-hmm. So you think Lee is leaning towards it now? Well, you know, I don't want to speak for him, and I don't want to say he's leaning towards it, but he definitely said he's not opposed. And so I was just really pleased because there were representatives that had heard that he was opposed. Uh, and I know, look, there's a long history there. I know his dad was opposed at one point. I know he's been considering it. I know he read your book. I think he's read Tom Coburn's book. So what I see in Mike is a guy who's actually doing the analysis and considering. He definitely says he's not opposed any longer. That's good. Now, you say you're moved. What's the next state? You mentioned three. Is it, is it West Virginia? I think West Virginia is next. There's likely to be a vote in the House tomorrow. Their session ends on Saturday, so sometimes these guys push us to the very end and we time out. I'm a little worried about that. We really had a miracle in committee. I was in committee there this week at the beginning of the week on Monday. I literally sat there, Mark, from 7.45 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, never knowing when they were going to hear it. Literally couldn't even go eat because they wouldn't tell us. They weren't that cooperative, the chairman of the committee. The chairman ultimately voted against us, and I was just praying for a positive vote. We needed 13. I had 11 that I could, could actually account for. And, man, adding a couple in committee is hard. And we ended up winning 13 to 12. Really great delegate there sponsoring us who's in charge of the thing. That's Marshall Wilson. And I've got to tell you, there's an interesting dynamic there. there you know, uh, we've got Shelley Moore Capito is the senator, one of the senators from West Virginia. Her son is a delegate in the House there. I think he's an up-and-comer, and he actually split from the committee chair. He's the vice chair, and he split and voted for it. He was the vote that put us over. So I'm, I'm very happy with his leadership. Now, what's happened in Arizona? So Arizona, we did pass. Uh, you and I, as, as you know, we butted heads pretty hard with Andy Biggs when he was there as the Senate president, and he held us up for three years. Uh, the second that he left the Senate, we passed. So we're done in Arizona. We're good to go there. <laughs> And it was literally, it was easy the next year, Mark. It just wasn't a problem. What's the likelihood, the likelihood that 20 states will adopt this resolution in the next year? maybe two years? I mean, I hate to say 100%, but I would say I'm 90% confident that by the end of 2020 we'll be at 20 states. We're very likely to get West Virginia. I mean, it could go either way, but if, if we get out of the House tomorrow, the Senate president assured me himself that they'll just do it on a voice vote. They'll pass it. They've passed it two years in a row. So that would be number 15. Right behind that is Mississippi. In Mississippi, Mark, I have the best whip count ever. I have every single senator on board except for one. Unfortunately, that one, his name is Tullison, he's in charge of the committee, and he won't let us out of committee. 
And the real key here, I would tell you, in Mississippi, and this is interesting, is the lieutenant governor. He runs the Senate. His name is Tate Reeves. He's running for governor. He's told me, point blank, I sat with him. He looked me in the eye and said he supports. Everybody knows Reeves is the key. If he says it goes, it goes. Right now we're stuck in committee there. So I think we get it out of committee there. I absolutely am sure we passed the Senate. We've passed the House by like a 30, 35 vote margin before so we can get it done. Tate Reeves is the key. Are they still, the opponents who claim to be conservatives, still with the fear-mongering, still that it's a constitutional convention? Is that, is that their basic argument? Yeah, it's the runaway argument, Mark, and, and we've proven it's not true. We've given them all the evidence we need. Rob Nadelson's written a great book on it. Uh, Mike Ferris has written a book on it. Obviously, your book is out there that disproved it from the very beginning, but they just keep saying it. They just keep repeating the leftist talking points. And I'll give you a great example. In Iowa, we're really stuck right now. Last year, the Senate promised to do it. We passed it two years in a row in the House. The Senate burned me last year. The Senate President, Jack Whitver, told me point blank, you know, we're going to get it done this year, and then they let the time run out. They never even did a vote on it. Today, right now, what we have is this gal. Her name is Tamara Scott. She runs Concerned Women for America. I think Mm -hmm. we can call them, if she's any example, Unconcerned Women for America. Mm -hmm. She's also involved with Iowa Faith and Freedom. She's running around scaring everybody off, and apparently everybody in Iowa is afraid of this Tamara Scott. That She's really the issue, I've been told. And she's running around, why? What is is her motivation? Yeah, it's a runaway convention. We're going to lose our Constitution. All right, let me let me tell, tell the public something here. It is a meeting of states who agree to meet on specific subject matters. That's just the beginning. Whatever comes out of this meeting, this convention of states, still has to go back to the states to be ratified either by a vote of the legislatures or a convention within the state as any other amendment. So if Congress, two-thirds of both houses of Congress, pass a proposed amendment goes to the states, and you need 38 states to ratify. This process is actually better. It's the states, not Congress, saying, hey, we need to look at these areas. Here's how we want to fix these areas. It's not coming from Washington, Congress. It's coming from state legislatures. We want to fix these areas. 34 states necessary to have the meeting. 38 states, just like the other process, to ratify. It's in the Constitution. That's why we call it Article 5. It was adopted within a few days at the end of the Constitutional Convention. So when you have people running around saying, woe is me, the sky is falling, and so understand they're not constitutionalists. They're not following the Constitution. In the meantime, the Constitution's being changed almost daily by the courts, by Congress. We're trying to go through the proper mechanism, which they refuse to do. And this proper mechanism is now attacked as a constitutional convention which it's not you can't have a constitutional convention anymore it's a convention a meeting of states that's all it is and they attack it and they have no answer for how we're supposed to control what the courts do or how we're supposed to control what congress does by statute through the back door they have no answer to this process do they mark meckler they don't. And even worse, Mark, these, these groups, Eagle Forum and the John Birch Society and Concerned Women for America, they are now tools for the radical left. They're actually, I don't want to say that they're, they're cooperating with them, but they are using the same talking points. Every single radical leftist group in America signed a press release against what we're doing. I'm talking the Soros funded groups, Common Cause, Planned Parenthood, La Raza, MoveOn.org, Daily Cause, every public employee union. They've all signed a press release against what we're doing. They're public about this. So all of these people are essentially holding hands with the radical left, keeping us from using the tool that the founders gave us to prevent a runaway federal government. Mm-hmm. And it's really crazy. I mean, they're, these so-called conservative groups, and there's very few of them, let's be honest, there's not a lot of them, but they're very loud. These, these groups uh, have, as you point out, they're really throwing in with big labor, the big environmental movement. All those entities that are perfectly happy with abandoning the Constitution, eviscerating the Constitution through non-constitutional means. They're really throwing in with them, aren't they? They are, and they're, they're fogging the issue, Mark. Look, all we're trying to do here with this Convention of States, with our resolution, the only things that can be talked about are things that would put fiscal restraints on the federal government, things that would impose <coughs> term limits on the federal government, and things that would limit the scope and power of the federal government. That's all that can be talked about at this convention. Where are the Koch brothers on this? 
They haven't weighed in at all. I've never heard from them. I get accused all the time that I'm a tool of the Koch brothers. I don't know the Koch brothers. They haven't weighed in at all. Not involved in it. Well, you favor open borders? Are you a tool of the Koch brothers? <laughs> Apparently. Look, Mark, the best tweet I've ever received is somebody told me that I was supported by the Koch brothers and George Soros. I thought, man, that's a miracle. <laughs> All right, keep up the good work. Say hi to your lovely bride from me, and uh, and we, we appreciate you giving us an update. Same to you, Mark. God bless you, brother. And God bless you, too. Making some nice, steady progress over there. And you'll see they'll come under vicious attack very shortly. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. Go to conventionstates.com, press the button, sign the petition. More importantly... Get 10 of your friends to do the same. When you sign the petition, then that sends a letter to your state legislator. You go on the list in their district as a supporter. We deliver those lists to the state legislators. It means something to them.